Welcome to the Faith Fellowship Baptist Church Daily Devotional Series. Today we are in Psalm 35, and Psalm 35 uh, I've, I've entitled, A Cry Against Injustice. Uh, this is David writing, and uh, we're going to get right into it. It's a, a bit of a longer psalm, but it has two predominant themes that we'll look at, and then see how they can uh, speak to our hearts this morning. So Psalm 35, A Cry Against Injustice. Starting in verse 1, I'm reading from the ESV version. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise for my help. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed who despise evil, or who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. Let their, let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me. Without cause they dug a pit for my life. Let destruction come upon him when he does not know it. And let the net that he hid ensnare him. Let him fall into it to his destruction. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, exulting in his salvation. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him, the poor and needy from him who robs him. Malicious and malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. They repay me evil for good. My soul is bereft. But I, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my chest. I went about as though I were grieved for my family or for my brother. As one who laments his mother, I bowed down in mourning. But at my stumbling, they rejoiced and gathered. They gathered together against me. Wretches whom I did not know tore at me without ceasing. Like profane mockers at a feast, they gnash their teeth at me. They gnash at me with their teeth. How long, O Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction, my precious life from the lions. I will thank you in the great congregation. In the mighty throng, I will praise you. Let not those rejoice over me who are wrongfully my foes, and let not those wink the eye who hate me without cause. For they do not speak peace, but against those who are quiet in the land they devise words of deceit. They open wide their mouths against me. They say, Aha! Aha! Our eyes have seen it. You have been silent, O Lord. You have seen, O Lord, be not silent. O Lord, be not far from me. Awake and rouse yourself for my vindication, for my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Aha, our hearts desire. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be put to shame and disappointed altogether who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Let those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad, and say evermore, Great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. A psalm of David that's a cry against injustice. Uh, and primarily uh, there are, again, two themes that stand out to me in this psalm. Uh, there's the, the cry for justice and defeat for the oppressors. And then there's the cry for vindication, salvation, and ultimately praise as the outcome for himself, for David. Um, it's, it's hard for us to quite fathom what he was going through. We aren't given that much context on this psalm. Uh, but there are many instances in David's life where, where men came with accusations against him that were false. Uh, there are times where he was pursued for something that he didn't do. That was the entire pursuit of Saul. David was anointed by God. Saul got angry, and Saul pursued David for many, many years. Um, there's certainly different in moments in his life when this could be referring to. But for us, we, we recognize in our world, right now we have some pretty stark examples of, of injustice before us in our world. And uh, though they may not be perpetrated directly against you or me here in, in Brandon, Manitoba, 
Uh, we do see how they affect our society and our world uh, in major ways. And, and our response to injustice, I think in some ways, shows where we put our trust. And David's response to injustice in his life is not to put his trust in his own abilities, to put his trust in his own, even his own righteousness, even his own uh, ability to defend himself or his strength of his army or any of those things. Uh, David always immediately when there's injustice, he turns to God and he cries out to God and he continues to cry out to God until God answers, recognizing that that's the only place that he can go with his cries against injustice. And so that's what you and I need to learn as well from Psalms like this, is that when we see injustice in the world, as we do now, we need to learn what it means to cry out to God against that injustice and to trust the God of perfect justice, that he will bring about righteousness in the end, uh, that this earthly uh, shell that we now live in is not the permanent thing and it's not the place of ultimate justice, right? Our hearts cry out, because we see wickedness prevailing and we see innocent suffering. Um, and, and the reality is that that may happen on this earth because this earth has fallen. That wickedness will not always be punished perfectly by our justice systems. That innocence will not always be rewarded by our world. But that in eternity, they both will happen. Wickedness will be punished. God will establish uh, those who he has saved, he will bring them uh, to the fore. They'll, they'll triumph over the wickedness of their enemies, right? And, and it will be punished in the end. And so we trust an eternal perspective of justice. Uh, as David does, he also trusts that God is working in the moment. And he prays in certain ways that we can learn to pray in our day and age as well. David cries again for justice and for defeat of the oppressors, of those who are wicked and committing unjust acts. Uh, verses, in verse 1, right away, he says, Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. He cries for God to be active in the moment. In verse 4, he says, Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed, those who despise or devise evil. Let them be like chaff before the wind, driven away. Let their way be dark and slippery. Uh, the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Um, so he, he cries out for justice for these people, that their own plans later on, uh, he says in verse 8, let destruction come upon them, let the nets that he hid ensnare him, let the traps that he's put up be what he falls into, uh, let him fall into it to his own destruction. These are prayers that we can pray for those who commit injustice. We can pray that their traps would catch them, that they would be caught in their wickedness and that justice would prevail. These are biblical prayers to pray against the unjust in this world. And David does it again, verse 8, verses 11 to 12, 15 to 16, 19 to 21, and 25 and 26. Uh, all of those verses in this psalm interwoven with the other ones uh, are verses crying out for what the wicked are doing and, and a cry that God would see and then would act against it. And we see in this psalm uh, an interesting thing that this is a psalm where David goes on for a while because it seems like God doesn't answer him right away here. Uh, even in verse 17, he says, How long, O Lord, will you look on? Uh, and it's an example of continuing in prayer when we see injustice and continuing in prayer uh, as injustice continues in our world. We know that even if there are sweeping changes in the light of George Floyd's death, which is just a week and a bit ago as at the time of this video, and, and even if there's justice for all the, the rioters who have been there for bad causes, who have just been there to loot and to destroy, uh, even if there are, is great justice in our land in the light of all of this, all the protests and the, and the cries for justice, there will be another unjust thing that arises. There will be more corruption in the hearts of men, especially in nations like Canada and the US that have largely abandoned God. And so we need to learn how to continue to cry out for justice before God. That's, that's a great theme uh, in scripture. And then trusting, as David does, that one day vindication and salvation will come with praise as the outcome. That's where David lands uh, after all of these cries that God would come against the unjust in the land. Uh, he lands 
uh, and well throughout, he intersperses these also moments of crying out for God's salvation for him, of God's vindication for his cause. He says, God, I've, I've lived, I, they're coming against me for things that I didn't do. Uh, for without cause, in verse 7, they hid their nets. Without cause, they dug a pit for my life. And then verses uh, 11 through 14, he says that they rise up saying things, asking me of things that I don't even know about. I haven't even heard of what they're talking about. They repay evil for good. Uh, when they were sick, I, I wore sackcloth. I was mourning with them. I was on their side, and now they're coming against me. They're turning against me. I've, I've lived rightly, so vindicate me. And he trusts that God will be the one to do that. He trusts that God will be the one, as Paul did when he wrote uh, in, in the book of Romans, that God will repay, that vengeance is his, that we can trust God with these things. He also cries out for God's salvation uh, early on, right in verse uh, 3. He says, uh, as he's asking God to be active, draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers. Then he asks God, say to my soul, I am your salvation. Remind me that you're the one who saves me. And these themes of him crying out for salvation and vindication are uh, equal in measure to the cries for justice throughout this psalm. And then he also expresses at multiple points in the psalm, uh, like verse 9, Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, exulting in his salvation. And then also towards the end, uh, verse 27, Let those who delight in my righteousness shout and be glad and say evermore, Great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servants. He recognizes that when God establishes justice, when God establishes salvation, when God establishes vindication, when God vindicates him, praise is the right outcome for you and for me. And even in the midst of what's going on, we should be praising God for he is good and he's promised that in the end, he will take care of all these things, that justice will prevail in the end, that his righteous justice will prevail. The wicked won't get away forever with what they do. And so we can trust that with David as we go through these days in our life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are good, that your justice will prevail, uh, that the wicked will not get away forever with what they do, that injustice won't have the final say. No matter what goes on on this earth, no matter what goes on in our land today, we know that ultimately you are the righteous judge of all eternity. We thank you for that. We do pray that you would heal our lands of injustice. We do pray that you would help us to be uh, agents of change, uh, that we who have been saved by your gospel would proclaim hope to the world. Uh, we thank you for your salvation, for your vindication of our cause, and uh, we praise you for all of those things. We pray this all in your name.